Hey, what's up there, dear soul first? Today I thought I'll make a video and show you how you can test and diagnose problems with your catalytic converter. Or if you're trying to say it for the first time, your Cadillac converter. <laughs> okay, the job of your catalytic converter is basically to reduce NOx, which is an emissions gas and for which you get tested for when you go to uh, for your yearly emissions test. And they go about in two ways. They either get clogged up or the material in, inside there breaks up and clogs up your catalytic converter or they just become inefficient and they don't do their job which is to clean up the exhaust gas that's coming out of your combustion chambers. Okay, now these guys rarely go bad unless uh, you know you neglect them and by that I mean let's say your engine has a misfire or you just put poor quality gas in your car um, that bad gas or the misfire puts uh, extra strain on your catalytic converter because your catalytic converter is there to to burn up all the excesses from your engine and uh, you know if you keep doing it or you, you let the misfire go and treat it after a while this things inside here break up or carbon buildup uh, clogs things up and uh, you know or your Kelly converter becomes inefficient and then you'll have to replace this and you don't really want to do that because these things they have uh, some precious metals in them like uh, platinum I believe and probably some other precious metals that make these things cost close to a thousand dollar even for uh, you know one small catalytic converter so if you have any of those problems you want to take care of them right away Okay, but if you have a car that's seven years old or less, or it has less than 70,000 miles on it, and your catalytic converter is bad, there's a federal warranty on these, and the manufacturer has to replace it if they go bad uh, under, under those terms, okay? Okay, so let's start with a clogged catalytic converter, or a catalytic converter you that you suspect is clogged. Well, some signs of a clogged catalytic converter are poor acceleration, lack of power, and also poor MPG. You might even get some uh, check engine light for, uh, you know, codes uh, for uh, misfires and or catalytic efficiency below threshold. Uh, the only thing is though, you, there, you may get, check engine, get a check engine light for misfires before you get a catalytic efficiency uh, threshold code because your, uh, the monitoring system for your catalytic converter is set up to measure the efficiency over a you know, longer term, maybe after 100 miles or so, whereas your check engine light uh, monitoring system is is, uh, is a lot quicker than that. And you'll so, you know, you, you get a check engine light for uh, misfires as a result of a clogged catalytic converter a lot sooner than a check engine light for a catalytic converter below threshold efficiency. I should also say that sometimes the symptoms, when your catalytic converter becomes clogged up, the symptoms could resemble a bad tranny or a transmission kick because, you know, you could be driving down the street or trying to get on the highway or you know just step on your gas pedal very really quickly and your car jerks back and forth and you know to someone that hasn't experienced that before you could feel like a tranny is kicking or the tranny is having a hard time getting into gear and you know you could misdiagnose it very very easily but it's just your miss your your engine misfiring and or the just the lack of power because of the you know the burnt air fuel mixture that's still stuck in your combustion chamber because your catalytic converter is clogged up as is not letting your engine uh, push all that stuff out before the new air and fuel mixture gets in there. Now as far as how you can check for a clogged catalytic converter it's basically there's two ways. You can either drill holes before and after your catalytic converter into your exhaust pipes and then get a pressure gauge and measure the air pressure uh, and if they're, they're different there's a lot more pressure before your catalytic converter a lot less afterwards then your Kelly converter is probably clogged up and you need to replace it and if you don't have access to those tools well basically you can uh, do a quick and easy uh, check let's say your Kelly converter in our case which used to be attached to this flange before I cut it to try to recycle it for those uh, precious metals I told you earlier it's connected to your exhaust manifold and what you can do is basically just loosen, loosen this, uh, these nuts and bolts before your Kelly converter and now it's gonna you know, cause an exhaust leak and it's going to be loud but you know if you go for a quick drive around your uh, your block and if you notice a difference your car is running a lot better your acceleration is better then you know the, your catalytic converter is plugged and since you created this exhaust leak now exhaust can escape through this exhaust leak and your engine can breathe and run better so you need to replace that catalytic converter but at least you don't have to go buy tools to, to see if you had to replace it Okay, now if you don't suspect your catalytic converter is clogged but you suspect that it's lost its efficiency maybe either you got to check engine light for a uh, catalytic efficiency below threshold or you failed your yearly emissions test due to uh, high NOx well in that case you're going to need either a scanner capable of reading live data or a 
infrared thermometer to properly test your catalytic converter. Okay, so in order to show you how you can use a scanner, I'm going to be doing this test on this Audi. Uh, so Audi has a check engine light and does have a code for catalytic efficiency below threshold. And again, you're going to need a scanner that's capable of reading live data. Now, I know that you're thinking, there's no way this, this scanner is capable of doing live data. But it is. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty good tool. Here's the model number if you ever want to buy it. I bought it off eBay for, I don't remember exactly, I think it was about 40, 50 bucks. But yeah, it's, you know, for its size, it's, you know, it works. It does live data. It works on Audis, American cars, domestic, foreign, all of the above. And so we're going to be choosing live data. And also, you want to make sure you do this on a warm engine. You want to make sure you go for a 10, 15 minute drive. And that way your calorie converter is properly warmed up. And it is doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is to clean up your exhaust, uh, your exhaust gases. Okay, so here we go. We got O2 sensor. One one is your bank one sensor one, and bank one is always the bank that uh, cylinder number one is on. And this sensor is supposed to, you know, your, your reading, your voltage reading, is supposed to be between uh, point point zero five or point one to all the way up to point six seven volts. And it is doing what it's doing. That just shows that uh, you know it's reading the you know rich lean condition properly. So next we're going to go to O2 sensor bank 1 sensor 2. Okay, now as you can see on uh, O2 sensor bank 1 sensor 2, which is the post cat sensor which is there to measure the efficiency of the of your catalytic converter, the voltage is somewhat similar to the voltage reading we got on our uh, bank 1 sensor 1 or the pre cat sensor. That basically is saying the the catalytic converter that's between the two sensors might as well not be there because it's not doing anything to those exhaust fumes and you're getting the same same amount of oxygen here if I rev the engine it will it will, it will uh, even uh, move up and down even even more and uh, resemble the readings from the first O2 sensor but uh, let's just take a look at our uh, O2 sensors on our uh, bank 2 and see how they behave I should probably mention that if you have also a check engine light for your O2 sensor after your cat or your uh, you know secondary O2 sensor uh, being bad potentially being bad now you need to <laughs> test that O2 sensor uh, or replace it if it's bad before you conclude that your catalytic converter is bad. Okay so now let's take a look at our uh, O2 sensors on the other bank for which we don't have a, a check engine light for a catalytic efficiency below threshold see how they behave and so here's our O2 sensor uh, our primary one or pre-cat O2 sensor Again, this one is, uh, you know, working like it should. So next we go to our uh, second O2 sensor or post-cat O2 sensor. And well, what do you know? <laughs> this one is pretty much fluctuating very similar to the first one. Now here's a little history behind before uh, this car. When I bought this car at an auction, it had bad ignition coils and it did have a couple of misfires. Now I'm assuming that the previous owner probably drove like that for quite some time and that's what has caused both their catalytic converters to go bad and that's why it probably was at an auction that's how I came into the position of this car <laughs> but that just shows you like I said earlier don't let uh, you know don't uh, let things go as far as uh, you know misfires and whatnot as a concern because they could do a lot more damage and cost you a lot more money in the long run alright guys now I'm in the, my 04 Volkswagen Passat and I know this car has a good catalytic converter because this car passed its emissions test not too long ago so uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, rev the engine for a little while and to warm up the catalytic converters and then we're just going to look at our uh, post cat O2 sensor and see how uh, O2 sensor what the readings are when you have a good catalytic converter. There you have it folks as you can see our readings for our uh, post cat O2 sensor on this car are pretty steady at about half a volt 0.5 to 0.6 volts which is well within spec. So now we've confirmed that our catalytic converter is indeed uh, is running, is doing its job on this car. Okay, you know what? Now I just realized that uh, you can get these uh, readings from your O2 sensors just using a multimeter. So you don't necessarily need a scanner that's capable of uh, reading a lot of data. But uh, I'll do a separate video for that. I'm gonna be doing a video on how you can test uh, an O2 sensor and I'll include, or actually you'll be able to figure out how to hook up your multimeter to your O2 sensor to get those readings 
But uh, but next, we're just gonna go on to the using the infrared thermometer to check your calorie converters. All right, so in order to be able to use your uh, infrared thermometer, you're gonna have to, well, obviously find your calorie converters. Again, your calorie converters are gonna be located off, uh, after your exhaust manifold. Now on this car, since it's a V, V6, we got two sets of calorie converters and on each bank, you, you in fact on this car have two catalytic converters and here's a look at your first catalytic converter now this car is warmed already and as you can see we got about a uh, 190 200 degrees fahrenheit and that's the uh, you know you obviously would much prefer to measure the temperature of the exhaust fumes themselves but the next best thing since you can't measure that temperature is the exhaust pipe so what you want to do is uh, get the car nice and warm Start the car, make sure again it's nice and warm, then point this at the exhaust pipe before it gets to your catalytic converter and then record that temperature reading. And then we're going to go underneath the car and point this at the, after the catalytic converter and then you would get the, compare the temperature reading and the temperature reading after your catalytic converter, if your catalytic converter is working properly, is going to have to be a good couple hundred degrees hotter than before your catalytic converter. That's going to mean that your catalytic converter is doing its job. It's reacting with the exhaust fumes that are going through it and uh, as a result the exhaust fumes is getting warmer. Now again you have two catalytic converters on each bank on this car so in a way uh, as a way to measure the efficiency of each one you could get underneath and you know point this in between each catalytic converter and that way you can kind of figure out which one is going bad, but they usually go bad around, I guess, uh, at the same time. All right, now things are gonna be very loud when I start the car, so I'm not gonna talk, but pay attention to just uh, the, the readings we see on the infrared thermometer. All right, now we're underneath the car, and there's a look at our uh, first catalytic converter. We were pointing the infrared thermometer to the front of this. So actually, it looks like there is enough space down here to measure both so I'm gonna get the measurement after the first catalytic converter then we're gonna come back here and measure the temperature after the second catalytic converter and if you're wondering there were two sensors on these cars I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see but it's at that in the middle you guys probably are not gonna be able to see it but it's in the middle of the second catalytic converter So we have bad catalytic converters on this car as well. Now I knew this before I did this video, but I figured it'd be better to show you guys how a bad catalytic converter behaves instead of a good one. Now uh, the first catalytic converter was doing a little bit of its job. You know the temperature before that catalytic converter was about 200, and then afterwards uh, it went up to 230, 240, but still nowhere near enough. It needs to go up about two, two, at least 200 degrees Fahrenheit, preferably more. Then the second catalytic converter was definitely a bad catalytic converter. In fact, the temperature before that it was 230 and then after that it was close to 200 so you know it's pretty much doing nothing just sitting there. <laughs> so uh, in conclusion we would need to replace those catalytic converters which is going to cost us a lot of money but again it's uh, very important to uh, make sure that you diagnose your catalytic converters properly and you know, you can, again, if you don't have a scanner that's capable of live data, I'm going to be doing a video following this video on how to test an O2 sensor. So you can look at that video uh, at figure and figuring out how you can test your O2 sensors, especially the post-cat O2 sensor, since that's the one that measures the efficiency of your Kelly converter. And also, uh, watching that video, you'll be able to figure out easily how to get, the, using a multimeter, how to get the O2 sensor readings. So you can just basically hook up your o multimeter to that sensor and record those readings and then that way you'll be able to figure out whether your catalytic converter is good or bad and you can kind of bypass uh, needing to buy a OBD2 reader with uh, live data capability. Okay, so with that said, I hope this video helps people out there. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.